In these videos, we usually discuss the science that supports our fusion energy research. Sometimes it's necessary to discuss what supports the science. Right now, what supports the science, which is funding from the federal government, is under existential attack. All of basic science research in the United States is in danger from planned cuts in research budgets of up to 50%. Now, these are across-the-board cuts proposed for almost all fields of scientific research by the current administration. But let's just take an example. People who have been watching these videos know that much of the fusion energy research that we do is based on what we learn of plasmas from studying plasmas in the universe. Now, to study plasmas in the universe, you need big telescopes and especially big satellites. Those are supplied by the thousands of engineers and scientists at NASA. So right now, let's look at what the Planetary Society has to say about the situation for NASA. Days ago, the administration's nominee to lead NASA called for a, quote, new golden age of science and discovery at the agency. But the proposed budget from the White House, which cuts NASA science by 47%, would plunge NASA into a dark age instead. If enacted, this budget would force the premature termination of dozens of active productive spacecraft. This budget would halt the development of nearly every future science project at NASA, wasting billions of dollars of taxpayer funds already spent. This budget would eviscerate space science research, withering the nation's STEM talent pipeline by removing opportunities to train future scientists and engineers. The Planetary Society condemns this proposal for NASA and for NASA science. We urge Congress to swiftly reject this proposal and restore funding for NASA's science mission. Well, that's the situation at NASA. But again, these bu proposed budget cuts are across the board. In biomedical research, the main support for biomedical research in the United States and the largest support for biomedical research in the entire world comes from the National Institutes of Health. But the proposed budget would cut the National Institutes of Health and the Centers for Disease Control by over 40%. This would essentially halt basic research in biomedicine in the United States and cripple it worldwide, where many scientists collaborate with U.S. researchers. This is the research has given us such advances in our standard of living, in our longevity, and which protects us against disease and from future pandemics. Now, these are not the cuts that you may have read about. Uh, the withheld grants, the moves to cut off grants entirely against Columbia, my alma mater, or Harvard, or many other universities. These cuts that have all been already been in pl put in place are severe, are damaging. But the proposed cuts, the planned cuts, are 10 times worse. They would mean not only dark ages here we come, but dark ages here we are. Since these are just proposals, they can be fought against, they can be protested against, and they can be defeated. But right now, the very freedom that we have, the freedom of speech, freedom of protest, are themselves under threat. Everyone has read about the students at Columbia and elsewhere who have been detained, who have been deported, who have been threatened, who have been expelled, because of their protests. Their protests were mainly about and against the Gaza war. But the protests that 
that are under threat are any protest, because the administration is claiming the right to punish people for what they have said, for what they have demonstrated against. Tearing up the First Amendment, which guarantees freedom of speech to all who live here, not just citizens. And when anyone's freedoms are impaired, all our freedoms are impaired. And the threats to our freedom, the threats to our rights to protest, are not the biggest threats to our freedom right now. Because our very liberty, our ability to live without the threat of being put in jail, of being punished, of sent to foreign prisons, is under threat. As people know from the headlines, President Trump has claimed the right to designate anyone a terrorist without charge or trial, to put them on a plane and send them to indefinite imprisonments in El Salvador or elsewhere without any hope of challenging that imprisonment. The courts have totally disagreed, but these rights can only de be defended the way they have been de defended in the past, by unified mass protest. Sixty years ago, I marched in Selma for the freedoms of African Americans because I knew, many people knew, that if any of us have lost our freedom, all of us have lost our freedom. Today, people around the country are commemorating the 250th anniversary of the start of the American Revolution. The American revolutionaries in the Declaration of Independence laid out many of the reasons that the actions of George III caused them to raise the revolution. Among those actions that they were protesting was depriving us, in many cases, of the benefit of trial by jury, transporting us beyond the seas for pretended offenses. Exactly the procedures that Trump claims he has the right to impose on us today. As in the past, the only defense we have is that we are many and they are few. If we unite in protest, these threats to our freedoms can be defeated. If we delay, they become much more difficult to defeat. Right now, millions of people in cities across the United States are preparing to peacefully demonstrate against these threats to our freedom and for a better world on May 1st, International Workers' Day. I don't normally combine my role in LPP fusion with my political activism, but these are exceptional times. So I urge you to join with your fellow citizens, with your fellow residents, with all Americans, immigrants, native-born alike, to protest against these threats to our freedom, to protest for science, for our freedoms, for fusion, for a better world. Find out where you can protest at this and other websites. See you on May Day.